Hello everybody! Howdy! Yes, there is no music anymore because YouTube is cracking down. Even on the royalty-free YouTube music channel, they will demonetize your video if you have any music in it. So maybe what we should do is ask someone who's good on the keyboard to come up with something for the opening music of these videos and we'll use that. <laughs> well even ones that you do like karaoke and they play their own music and do their own words you know like Mammon we've gotten copyright things on that too. <laughs> yeah. Oh good lord. Oh this system of things just go figure. Oh this world has just gone crazy. <laughs> I've gone to hell in a handbasket. But I will say Whoever left the comment under where we made the comment about the toilet paper apocalypse, thank you so much. That was so funny. We had a very good laugh. Yes, you're absolutely right. We don't have to worry because we have a years and years supply <laughs> right back here on these shelves. Yes. Yes. And for those of you who enjoy a little bit of that type of humor, I've done a t-shirt. It says, I survived the 2020 coronavirus toilet paper apocalypse. Yes. And for those of you that, you know, really like that sense of humor, um, next time you see your dog rubbing the butt across the carpet, go learn something. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> so without any further ado... Here is the nail in the coffin. Yes, yes. And we have 28 names. Yep. We're going to start down here, right, with the clear pins? Yes. All right. Now, thank you, Nellie, for giving us this family, and they wrote it out, and this is awesome. Muchas gracias. Rosario, A-R, I-R, A-R, A-R, I-R. L R E R C R and A R. So this is the mom and dad, three sons, the grandkids, and a daughter-in-law. So it's wow. great to see all of these families, you know, coming out together. Hey, 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 watch her. These young ones, right in here. Just think, these are future contributors that aren't going to be contributing. Yeah. And kids that won't have to grow up in yeah. this cult and under that control and won't have to have nightmares of Armageddon. That's right. Look at all that money that's just slipping right through your fingers because of your bullshit. Exactly. All right. So now we have some dark green ones. This is AP and SP and two kids. Then we've got some dark blue. This is for Sammy and Mark, a couple. Nice. And as soon as I read the names of this family, I have an email to read from them. It nice. just brought tears to my eyes. Okay, they're uh, the hot pink color. This is Dimitri, Alex, Betsy, Amanda, Sarah, Phoebe, and Benjamin. This is an email that I have waited years to send to you. I am a former elder in a foreign language congregation. I woke up first and found the XJW community. I waited patiently to wake my family up as well. My wife and I have just received our DF letter. We are leaving the organization with seven. My wife and I and our siblings. Um, we left after learning about the child sexual abuse. I was the first to fully wake up after going to elder school where they taught us to never believe any accusation against an elder, no matter what it was. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, including abuse accusation. So if this is what they're teaching in elder school, I can see why so many elders are waking up. So my goodness, you know, these honest-hearted elders yeah. can see, for, see it for what it is. So not to believe any accusation against any elder, no matter what it is. Including abuse accusations. So now the rank and file, now you know not only why some of these elders are waking up and why they're waiting so they can wake up their family and take the whole family out, but you can see now why you can't get anything done and accomplished when you're an abuse survivor and you go to the elders. 
they are not going to believe any accusations against the elders, no matter what. Well, what, what they're going to believe, what they're going to believe is that any accusation is a lie. That's what they're going to believe, Watchtower. They're going to believe that any accusation is a lie. So you are making liars out of your body of elders. And this is why these abuse victims have got to contact the authorities. And you parents, if your kids have been abused, contact the authorities. Because going to the elders is not going to do any good. Nope. Because they're not going to believe your child. So going back to his email, I attended the class after my wife and I stumbled across the A&E documentary called Cults and Extreme Beliefs. Watch that one. It was a good one. Yes, it was. Jehovah's Witnesses are the second episode on that show, and it shocked and offended us. But it opened my eyes to some of the terrible things happening in the Borg. This opened the door for me to question the false prophecies that they have inflicted on the congregations. After learning about the cover-ups, my family members left as well. We're so happy to be out and free. We can finally live our lives as we see fit. No more slavery to a godless organization. And uh, here are the names, and I just read them. So, yes. Thank you for sharing all of that with us because I did not know that they are now teaching, you know, the elders not to believe any accusations against any elders. That that was shocking to me. Well, they're just, like I said, they're outright teaching their elders to lie. Yeah, exactly. That's what they're actually doing. Yeah. Okay, so then we've got the singles. All right. Starting with this green one, correct? Yes. Clear green is Randy or Randall. Either one. Uh, lavender is Deb. The clear purple is Nancy G. Yellow is Thomas. And the clear red is Amanda R. And Amanda R. is wanting to know about Facebook groups that we've mentioned in the past, you know, because they gave us a list of names for their Facebook groups and Facebook groups for love and support. So you admins or anybody who knows a good Facebook group um, that isn't into attacking one another and debating, you know, please put the links down below and I will go to my spam folder and you know clear all of those links because YouTube automatically puts them in my spam folder but I will try to remember to do that once a week and just clear you know all of those so it becomes public so that we can help all of these leaving you know find you know support you know and that's that's a interesting point that we'll get to here in just a minute because we have a few more that we want to put on the coffin lid yes we've got some old timers this is for Dorothy and Robin. Now the heart, this is for someone who was in it, and I don't remember if they were raised in it or not, but this is for ones who were in it or studying Studied. and never got baptized. So this is for Erica. Guys, welcome. Welcome to your freedom. Yes. It's a wonderful thing that Kim and I can do um, for this community to help everybody see that we are having an effect against Watchtower. As you can see, families are leaving large numbers of families. Again, this is all future money that Watchtower is not going to get their hands on. Yeah. They're diminishing. And that's why the numbers of people being put on this particular coffin lid seems to be shrinking and shrinking because we have more Kingdom Halls that are now being sold which would naturally follow a progression of things. You lose the people, then you would end up getting rid of the buildings. Yeah, because our first, you know, nail and coffin, I think like our first three or four of them, there was just hundreds and hundreds of witnesses leaving. Well, now there's hundreds and hundreds of kingdom halls being right. sold. Yeah. Okay, so before we get into the properties for sale, just a word about these Facebook groups, friends. Sometimes it's difficult, even for myself. You know, Kim and I have been out of Watchtower since uh, 2012. It's been a number of years. Kim and I have spent the vast mature, majority of that time studying, 
and researching, pouring over the Bible, different scriptures that definitely contradict certain theologies. And we're always changing and always learning. You know, what we believed last week may not be the same thing we believe this week. And you have to keep in mind that even with all of the studying and research that Kim and I have done, sometimes it gets a little frustrating when we get a brand new comment from somebody just waking up that can't comprehend where we are now as opposed to where they are just coming from. So you have to exercise patience with some of these people. When you first come out of Watchtower and you join a Facebook group and you're, you know, pointing to this Christian this and Christian that, not everybody on that Facebook group is at that level. A lot of us have now are up here. We can see things that we've never ever seen before. So you have to be patient. Show these people a little patience. And then for you friends that are just joining these, like Kim and I's videos, we do a lot of videos about the Bible that for those coming out of the cult, it's like, wow, Shocking. you're talking, you're really an apostate, you're blaspheming God, you're a heretic. No, it's just that our level of study and research is massive compared to what you have learned inside of Watchtower. So try to understand when you watch some of our videos that we have several, several years of study and research behind us now. And we've gotten several questions and comments. No, we are not atheists. We are not atheists. We still believe in a higher source. And like I keep saying, our DNA alone tells me we did not evolve. <laughs> exactly. And because there are things in the in the coal record for instance, there's a brand new video out there. Um, it's from, um, what's the channel? Unsolved Mysteries or Mystery History? One of those Mystery Histories, I mystery, believe. Mystery History. Brass doorknobs. That date back to like 300 million years. Now, I get it. I understand carbon dating is not the best. But this is what you got to look at. At the level... Strata. of strata that these brass doorknobs were found indicates more than just 6,000 years of human activity on this earth. Well, I know many would say, oh, well, see, they were buried by the flood. But the thing is, is they're encased in coal, which takes many, many years to form coal around something. Exactly. So it's taken a little bit longer than 6,000 years. And an example is the London Hammer. Google the London Hammer on YouTube. Blow your mind. It is so old, encased in rock, that the handle, the wooden handle, has turned to petrified wood. Yeah. And so what's, that it, takes a little more than 6,000 years. And what's interesting with the London Hammer, the hammer is made out of iron. And it hasn't rusted away in all those thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years that it would take to turn the wood handle into petrified wood. Well, not only that, there's a pole in India, I believe, that is made of iron. It hasn't rusted, and they can't figure out why. Yeah, so, you know, yeah. from both perspectives, those of you just waking up recognize that many of us have done more research at this point. So what we say in front of our cameras will sound foreign to you because you haven't studied, you haven't researched. Such as, you know, go and listen to the YouTube channel X, uh, XJW Elder's Wife Jane Doe. She is reading portions of the Bible and picking out things that as Jehovah's Witnesses We've never, ever caught. And what she's reading is things that completely challenge what you knew as a Jehovah's Witnesses, as a Jehovah's Witness and or other Christian groups. So, Bonnie, I have a question for you right here. <laughs> 
if you were to join any one of these Facebook groups that, you know, ex Jehovah Witness Bible discussion Facebook groups, how long do you think it would be before you got kicked off? <laughs> oh, I know. Some of them it was like one comment. One one comment. So try to understand, friends. We're not trying to make anybody lose their faith. We're trying to help you recognize how deep this indoctrination goes. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a tidbit right here. I know for a fact that Bonnie's working on another video. That she's reading some scriptures. And it's in the book of Exodus. And when you read this set of scriptures, when, when she read it, she missed it. Because I'm doing something else and we just happened to go back and re refer to the same scripture. But when she reads this particular scripture in Exodus, understand that the altar was made of acacia wood covered with copper. Now, how many of you have ever really caught that? How many of you have ever really thought about what it would take to smelt copper in the desert? How many of you ever thought, wait a minute, why would they put a lightning rod out in the middle of the desert to do sacrifices on? How many of you ever thought about well, if that copper did get struck by lightning, the acacia wood would burn up on the inside. Or better yet, how many of you have even stopped to think that doing the amount of sacrifices on that wooden altar overlaid with copper, that the altar itself would just disintegrate or the copper would melt away? Well, I've watched you do blacksmithing. It would melt because, I mean, even your tray that you keep your coals in, you only do it for a few hours, and it's already looking kind of warped. Well, and that's solid metal. Yeah, and the other thing about copper, if you don't know much about copper, because I actually do some smithing with, with copper, the thing with copper is you can only fold it so many times before it breaks. You don't believe me? Get a piece of copper wire and bend it. Better yet, put a little bit of nick. Put a nick in that copper wire and it'll break right there. So if you can imagine these Israelites pounding this copper to form the altar that they're going to sacrifice on. Think about all of those little nicks from the hammer that was all... How many of you have even thought? I never did. So there's a lot of research that we're all doing that you're not accustomed to and it may sound like we're trying to destroy the Bible but we're not we're just trying to help you realize that the stories we've been indoctrinated with don't make sense and like Bonnie says they're not worth dying for and a lot of people are recognizing that because that's why we are doing this and Kim's now going to be doing the Kingdom Halls up for sale and the congregations merging yeah now also, um, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago about a project I've been working on with a group of XJWs. And um, I want to thank Adam. He is a data analyst and has been working on a spreadsheet. And when this is completed, we will be making it public. The amounts are going to knock your socks off. I mean, my goodness. We are trying to collect all properties for sale and sold by Watchtower and I believe we've even found some back to 2006 now and he is working on a spreadsheet and I'm helping him I'm adding things and they're using my list you know thankfully I've been keeping a list since 2014 <laughs> and I mean this is gonna be incredible just so everybody can see because um, when we first started doing this, we took a lot of criticism. Yes, we, we were did. told we were full of it. You know what? We were full of it because we were exaggerating and they weren't selling that many. What we are doing is we are ta taking the actual addresses and property listings, you know, for whatever we can find as proof, as evidence, and the amounts. And we are putting this in. And like I said, I I've seen the spreadsheet so far. We're only about halfway through my list, and the amounts are just astounding. So, you know, if any of you have, know of any Kingdom Halls up for sale or who have sold, 
please, you know, or if you want to be on the nail and coffin, let us know. Kimmy Ann Brooks at gmail.com and put nail and coffin in the subject line because um, I've got almost a thousand emails right now and I'm working on August now. So, mm -hmm. you know, and I appreciate your patience, everybody, but I mean, there's just a tremendous amount of work. I mean, just gathering all of these property listings together is just, you know, takes so much time. And I'm happy to do it because now, you know, this list is going to be phenomenal for all of us to see how much they are selling and how much money they're raking in. And for them to cry they're poor in the court systems ain't going to cut it anymore because we see the figures of how much property they have sold and are up for sale. So without further ado... Okay, now um, I want to ask for those of you who may know, the Uruguay branch, I've heard, is closing and going up for sale. And I haven't been able to find a property listing for it yet. So if anybody knows anything or can take pictures, you know, please let us know. So the Uruguay branch, it may be on its way out. And like I said, you know, if anybody knows any information on this, we would really appreciate it. And keep in mind, some of these properties that Watchtower is selling are also done privately. And it's very difficult to get the information on these private sales. So keep that in mind. If you're going to start checking on some of these things, they may not be a public sale, but a private sale. Well, just like the Sedona, Arizona Kingdom Hall. You know, we've heard rumors that it is going through a private broker. So if they're starting to do this to hide the money they're raking in. Well, it's l too little, too late at this point, honestly. Yeah, because at this <laughs> yeah. point, there's enough that yeah. should be raising big question marks. And that's all I'm going to say about that, wink, wink. <laughs> all right, so without further ado, the Lancaster, Wisconsin congregation has been dissolved and being sent to Belmont, Wisconsin. And yeah, before we go any further, this pin right here, guys, this pin right here. 59. 59. <laughs> now, that number is just for the kingdom halls that we're going to be naming for sale and have sold. It does not include congregations dissolving or the branches I'm going to be mentioning. So we're going to add some after the video. But anyway, the Lancaster, Wisconsin uh, congregation in Wisconsin has been dissolved and they're being sent to Belmont, Wisconsin. Okay, now this is interesting. Okay, now think. Belmont congregation and that, what I just mentioned, they're merging. Okay, now here's another one. I think it's pronounced Platteville, Platteville, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, is also being merged into the Belmont, Wisconsin congregation. So that's three congregations being dissolved into one. Interesting. Growing by leaps and bounds. Yeah. Now we did a video on this houseboat by itself, but we said in our next nail and coffin we will have it. But uh, this houseboat was built by missionaries, and they used it for going up and down the river, preaching to people. And um, they just—it was just sold for two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. And I believe this was Paraguay, in the Puerto Rosario area, San Pedro. So. They're selling even their houseboats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Now, this is good news because it looks like the Panama branch is going up for sale. <laughs> and it is no longer on the JW.org website. And uh, I've got pictures here. And uh, so we're looking for the property listing for that one soon. So that's two branches, two more branches, Panama and Uruguay. So the blessings, the blessings Jehovah is giving the organization. Yeah. Now, um, I found this one. This is a kingdom hall in Mexico. And unfortunately, I don't know what town it is in. 
but as you can see the uh, name of Salon of Kingdom Hall Testigos de Jehovah has been taken down and there's a for sale sign and I do see that the number is 7A-43 and in Mexico so if anybody has any details on this one I would appreciate it so we can find the property listing and get it in our watch watchtower property tracker spreadsheet <laughs> oh watchtower are you quaking in your little bootsy right now <laughs> now it's interesting because um, the 207 West Flores Tucson Arizona Kingdom Hall has gone up for sale and um, someone contacted headquarters and asked about the Kingdom Halls in Tucson and they got an email back get this from the JW Congregation Support Department at the Local Design and Construction Department you know the LDC the Land Development Company <laughs> Incorporated <laughs> the Land Development Company yeah, LDC. LDC now means Land Development Company <laughs> yeah Land Development Company you bet yeah and actually admits this person wrote back in their email that they are being sold privately see there again this is what we're talking about how many of these properties we don't are know being about. sold private and we can't track them yeah that Here's we don't one. know about yeah so the 207 West Flores Street Tucson Arizona um, that Kingdom Hall is the asking price on that is $275,000 and they also mentioned in their email about the 4616 East Rex Street R-E-X Street in Tucson Arizona but they don't have a price for that and that is also at this point being sold privately and this person with the LDC was asked if there are any coming up in the Phoenix area and they said, I can't divulge that information. So that tells me, yes, there is. The Land Development Company. <laughs> yes. Now we have one more being sold in Puerto Rico. Uh, 858 Carolina in Puerto Rico. And there's actually a video to that one. <laughs> so, and I didn't get a price on that one yet. Okay. Now, I want to thank the person so much, and I want to thank all of you, all of you, you know, it's not just one or two people, all of you, so many, are sending me this information. Someone sent me a real estate agent from Germany that has several Kingdom Halls listed, and I apologize for mutilating the names. Um, it is the Emu Mackler team in Germany that are selling these uh, in the Marl M-A-R-L Ham area in Germany this Kingdom Hall is 239,000 euros Kirpen Germany um, this one is 150,000 euros and this one is Dusseldorf Germany in the Heller off province 460,000 euros Bochum B O C H U M Langendreer Germany 250,000 euros I know my tongue just don't go that way Wormel Skirchen Germany 320,000 euros and this one has an apartment looks like with a nice little terrace yes, there. Yes, it does. Okay, this one is Recklin, Recklinhausen, Germany. 249,000 euros. Vlotho, V-L-O-T-H-O, Germany. 159,000 euros. These are nice kingdom halls. Yes, they are. All right. Now, this one we have in Sweden. Oh my goodness. A uh, serious vegan for 13.2 million Swedish crowns. 
and they are going to the new owner is planning to demolish the existing buildings and build new rental properties. Hmm. Wow. Well, all right. This one is also in Sweden. Um, this kingdom hall in Umea, U M E A, has been for sale for a long time. Well, the article in the newspaper was actually an article, and it says for six years. And. The price tag was previously set at 20 million Swedish crowns and does not say what they sold it for, but it's going to become a commercial property. This one, 1784 Scottsville Mumford Road in Scottsville, New York. It is sold to the Charity Bible Church December of 2017 for $179,000. Selling their property to Christendom. They don't care who they sell it to, do they? Yeah, so this property, you know, dedicated to their God, Jehovah, is now going to what they would consider Christendom. Yep. Okay, this one, um, 24 Gladstone Road, Wimbledon, London was originally listed for 1.2 million pounds and it sold it was going to go up for auction the end of this month uh, it was going to go up for auction on March 31st 2020 but it's been taken down and sold but they it looks like they sold it for a million pounds they're taking a loss on a lot of these well yeah yeah lost 200,000 pounds on that one in the Glenmore Valley, 1880 Dallas Road, Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. Get this, guys. It's up for sale for $2,950,000 Canada dollars. My goodness. This one I've been looking for for a while because the congregation dissolved over a year ago. And I've been looking for it, but I finally found it. 94 Wainumata Road, Wainumata, Wellington, New Zealand, just sold for 760000 New Zealand dollars. <laughs> All of the world. All of the world. Brick by brick, kingdom hall by kingdom hall. You know, I just can't help but think of something right now in the midst of this coronavirus epidemic and, you know, how the stock market's crashing and, you know, money seems to be going to hell in a handbasket. What's up? What's the exchange rate, Watchtower? <laughs> Fifth exchange rate. Exchange rate isn't as good as you hope for right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, this one is 20... Rinmu Street, R I M U Street. It sold November 6, 2019, for 920,000. I think this was New Zealand, if I remember correctly. So this would be 920,000 New Zealand dollars. But it's in Nae, 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 N A E, N A E, Lower Hut. Been looking for that one for a while, too. Mm hmm. All right, now this one, we already have a one pin on the coffin lid for the congregation dissolving, but now we're putting it, the Kingdom Hall is up for sale. 2101 Rocky Drive, Paris, Kentucky, for sale for 520000 U.S. dollars. You can see how when you get this on paper in a spreadsheet, the amounts that they're raking yep. in, like I said, it's going to be shocking to everybody. All right, this one sold on April 29th, 2019 for $410,000. It is 5629 Bridgetown Road, uh, the Green Township, Ohio, which was outside of Cincinnati. And I want to thank... The person that sent me the real estate page looks like from their uh, real estate guide, the magazine, because I found the property listing. 1230 Highway 63, Cumberland Gap, Tennessee. 
This one was originally listed for $289,000, but it sold on October 26, 2018 for 244900 Oh, they're losing money. Well, the thing i got to ask is why are they asking for donations to build a $300 million media center when you've already made that money in the Kingdom Halls you sold? Yeah. The friends, you know, the witnesses have already paid for all of this other property you're selling and keeping the money That's for. Right. And now you're asking more for your media centers? If I was a witness at this point, I would say, well, I would tell them where to go. I would say not only no, but hell no. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, someone, um, I believe in the Spanish-speaking... And I forgot the name of his YouTube channel. I had it on a post-it note, but it's gone from my paper here. Um, but he did a video about this, about several Kingdom Halls selling down in South America. Now, this one is from Colombia. We usually don't get a lot out of Colombia. But, plus it's difficult for me to, you know, search for, yeah. you know, Colombia if I don't hear, you know, of any specific Kingdom Halls for sale. But this one is the Mitula Casas, Alvarado, Tolima Casa, Zona, Urbana, Camineta. And it was for the Colombia Peso, $180 million, which translates to approximately $43,313 US dollars. But this Kingdom Hall, nice two-story one, sold. All right. Uh, Karameos, K-E-R-E-M-E-O-S, British Columbia, Canada, sold. Uh, this is 421 9th Avenue for $214,900. Canada dollars. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Let's make sure that's clear. Yeah, which is a little bit higher than U.S. dollars. Sold on May 28th, 2019. 9754 Lansing, Durand, Michigan, $70,000. And it's interesting because we have a lot from Michigan. Mm -hmm. Somebody sent me a list of kingdom halls and congregations in Michigan, and I started looking for property, and I found quite a few of them. Okay, this one is pending. 15800 Graves, Gregory, Michigan. $135,000. Sold June 10th, 2019. 11750 Fergus Road, St. Charles, Michigan. Sold for $75,000. Now this one. Um, 2201 South Outer Drive, uh, Saginaw, Michigan, is now the Glimpse of Hope Church. <laughs> so they sold it to a church. That happens a lot, you know. Oh, of course. Yep. Wait, see, what you Jehovah's Witnesses are not recognizing is the absolute disconnect. See, while Watchtower is telling you that they're growing by leaps and bounds, in this particular case, they sold the Kingdom Hall to another church, which would indicate that there's not enough Jehovah's Witnesses in that area to fill the Kingdom Hall, but there's enough non-Jehovah's Witnesses to fill this new church. So who's really growing? Yeah. Who's really growing, Jehovah's Witnesses? If Watchtower is selling your Kingdom Hall to other churches, that would indicate they're growing and you're not. Well, lose the disconnect. Well. Along those lines, someone did send me a picture of a Kingdom Hall inside a Kingdom Hall in Michigan. This is a photo of a Kingdom Hall, the attendance on Sunday, inside a Kingdom Hall. Empty. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a dozen people? I don't know, 20? Something like that. All right. 329 East Main Street, Addison, Michigan. Sold. And I could not find a price on it anywhere, so if anybody knows, you know, what that sold for, so we can get it on our property tracker. All right, this one sold on October 30th, 2018, 107 Linwood Avenue, Alma, Michigan, for $54,000. Two 
23247 Hospital Street, Cassopolis, Michigan. Sold on September 26, 2019 for $117,000. 337 Jonesville Road, Coldwater, Michigan. Sold for $127,000. Sold September 13, 2019, 3231 Boyer Road, Coloma, Michigan. It was originally listed for $228,000 and they sold it for $175,000. Watchtower better hurry and unload all these kingdom halls with the economy's going to go down the toilet. Well, you know what? And here's the thing you know, you might look at what they listed it for. And what they sold for and think, you know, Watchtower is losing money. But they're not losing any money when those kingdom halls were built with zero labor involved. And in a lot of cases, the lands were donated. At the very least, the land was bought with contributions from the congregation members itself. So even if they Take sell it at what might appear to be a market loss... Watchtower still gains 100% profit. They still got $175,000 with zero outlay. Yeah, with zero cash outlay. Yeah. 8972 Holmes Highway, Eaton Rapids, Michigan. Sold on September 24, 2019 for $200,000. Sold July 17, 2019. Um, for $123,500 was 13130 Benton, Grand Ledge, Michigan. I told you there was a lot in Michigan. A lot in Michigan. Yeah. Sold on September 21st, 2018 for $107,500. 4093 North M65 Highway, Hale, Michigan. Leaps and bounds. Yeah. Jehovah speeding up the work. Yeah. Now this one was originally listed for fifty-seven thousand nine hundred, and it sold on February seventh, twenty twenty, for only fifty thousand dollars. There, there again, it's pure profit for Watchtower. Yeah. Nine five one East Clarence Road, Harrison, Michigan. 3041 John Daly Street, Inkster, Michigan, sold on May 9th, 2019 for $145,000. 69 Lincoln Lake Avenue Northeast, Lowell, Michigan, is for sale. And I could not find a amount for that one. But as you can see, the for sale sign out front. Wish I could read that real estate sign. I'd contact the real estate directly. All right. Sold June 27, 2019. 508 Homer Road, Marshall, Michigan. $89,500. Lake Road, Otisville, Michigan. Sold on January 31, 2020. For $164,900. Well, what's happening to all the Jehovah Witnesses in Michigan? Bye bye. Okay, now this one is pending. 317 North Water Street, Pin Conning, Michigan, for $69,000. 69 this one sold on October 4th, 2019. Sold for $78,500. It is 14550 30th Avenue, Remus, Michigan. There's a lot. 1675 Frazio, F R A Z H O Road, Michigan, Roseville, Michigan. $262,000. Sold March 11th, 2019. 
All right, there was no sale price or sell date available for this one, but it's 4400 10th Street, Menominee, Michigan, sold to the Family Foot Clinic. Now, what's interesting <laughs> about this one is apparently they don't have too many Kingdom Halls in Menominee. Now, we've been to Menominee several times because we lived right across the river in up there in Wisconsin, don't you know? <laughs> hey? And, um, but this congregation in Menominee, I did check on JW.org, and they are now being sent down to Marinette, Wisconsin, which is a bad drive in the winter time because it's several miles. You have to cross the bridge, the river, and it's very narrow, winding, you know, like little tiny village streets with city traffic. So it's very treacherous. And I almost feel sorry for those witnesses in the nominee. Well, you know how you cannot feel sorry for them? It's recognizing that some people had to leave that Kingdom Hall and woke up. Because that's why the Kingdom Hall is for sale. Because, you know, the, um, the fan base isn't there no more. Yeah. Now, I asked Ugly Watchtower... And she did not know, she couldn't find anything because she said there's two different postal codes on this one. And I'm not familiar enough with England's, you know, addresses and stuff. But I have a um, thing here that the Grove Road Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses in Windsor, the postal code is SL41JQ that it sold on January 10th, 2019 for 920,000 pounds. Now, I'm not sure if this one is the same one or a different one because this has the Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses Grove Road, Windsor, postal code SL41JE. And it just says permanently closed. And, you know, I could not find a property listing for that one at all. So, anybody in the UK can figure that one out. Put it down in the comments. And thank you very much. All right. 18571 State Highway 131, Toma, Wisconsin. Um, it was originally listed for 139900 but it sold on July 30th, 2014 for $99,000. All right. 28 Bali Breaks Road, Bali Money in England for sale for 149950 Pounds and Ugly Watchtower, this was one of those that she had done and sent me the property listings. So thank you, sweetie. You know, she sent me several of these. Okay, 144A Coombs Road, Hales Owen, UK. Just sold for 250,000 pounds. The Garden Street... Newcastle under Lyme Staffordshire Kingdom Hall was just reduced to 149,950 pounds. 30 Colamba Street, Miles in Queensland, Australia, sold August 25th, 2016 for a hundred and five thousand Australia dollars this one is under offer it is the Cedar Terrace Road Seven Oaks Kent um, UK Kingdom Hall for four hundred thousand pounds 3860 FL-16 Green Cove Springs, Florida is up for sale for $350,000. Former uh, Kingdom Hall premises on Knowles Road, K-N-O-W-L-E-S in 
Landudno UK is up for sale. Another one that looks like it has an apartment above mm -hmm. it. 7053 North Enterprise Road, Ferndale, Washington. It's up for sale for $649,000. This one was a video on YouTube. 11829 Old 27 North Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt, Michigan. $114,900. Another one. <laughs> Told you there's a lot for sale up in Michigan. Mm -hmm. See, now we've done videos in the past of a lot of people leaving from Michigan. And then we've got congregations dissolving in Michigan. Now here, you know, several months, maybe even a year or so later, we've got all these kingdom halls going up for sale in Michigan. Okay, now this one was Catalonia, Barcelona, Spain. It was sold on September 23rd, 2016. I could not get a price, so if anybody knows any about, anything about those in Spain, let me know. 2214 North 56th Street, Seattle, Washington. This one, um, it was pending, but I checked it and it just sold for $1,450,000. Looks like a warehouse. Yes, it does. I mean, it looks like a kind of run-down brick building, as you guys can see. All right. Now, this one... Um, is already on our list, so we're not going to count this. It was originally listed for two hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars, but it's price reduced. Four hundred one Green Street, Tremont, Pennsylvania. It is now down to one hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars. Got to unload all that Pennsylvania That's right. halls. Okay, this one's also already on the list, but just reduced. It was originally listed for two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. 3086 East Apple Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan, $209,900. Sale! <laughs> Watch how having a fire sale, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, this one was originally listed for $139,900. It's 15029 South 24th Street, Vicksburg, Michigan. It's already on our list, but it sold May 24th, 2019 for $121,500. Already on our list, it was originally listed for $330,000, but now it looks like it has sold. It's pending. It's 280 Northwest Manor Road, Wapato, Washington, down to $198,000. This one is already on the list, but it just sold on July 31st, 2019, 850 Clark Street, Reedsburg, Wisconsin, for $362,000. This one's already on the list also, 160 Ferry Road, Delaware Township, New Jersey, but it just sold for $313,000. This one is already on the list, but it just sold October 22nd, 2019 for $401,000. 310 River Street, Balearica, Massachusetts. This one is already on the list, but it was originally listed for $199,000. It has sold um, for $186,000. 4668 133rd Street, Halley, Wisconsin. A lot of sold in Wisconsin, too. Mm -hmm. This one's already on the list, but it sold on December 24th, 2019. 1726 Pine Street, Silverton, Oregon for $340,000. This is already on the list. But it just sold January 10th, 2020. Uh, it's 1518 Nash Road, Cordes, Ontario. Um, for 898000 Canadian dollars. This one's already on the list. It was originally listed for 224900 But it sold on May 14th, 2019. 
for $200,000. And this is 625 North Polk Avenue, Walsenburg, Colorado. My goodness. <laughs> Got a sore throat after all that. You know, with all these Kingdom Halls closing, this is kind of getting boring, you know, kind of redundant. I mean, we're all getting the picture here, aren't we? Watchtower's going broke. <laughs> Watchtower's going out of business. Yeah, they're raking in the money. They're not going broke. But but that's what they want the courts to the think. The courts to think. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I want to thank Kathy. Um, I know we're running out of battery here, but she said um, that someone has commissioned a C.T. Russell coin, and we're not exactly sure if it was the Bible students or Watchtower, like a Jehovah Witness, but I'm going to put the link down below. You can rush out and buy up your C.T. Russell coins. <laughs> I would advise against it for a investment purpose because I don't think they're going to get that high as far as there the isn't investment. any value. <laughs> There's no value. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And also, um, I want to mention that uh, Christian Comedy Channel has um, sent me a link. He has done a video now where he's talking to an elder, and the elder admits that they are influenced by Satan. So. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. You mean someone's finally admitting the truth? Yes, they're admitting <laughs> the truth. Yes. yes. So thank you for watching, everyone. And like I said, if you know any information on any property sold, please you know, let me know. And just put, you know, nail and coffin or property in the subject line because we are working on this property tracker. And um, I'm trying to help the data analysts get in as much information as possible. Yeah, so thanks for spending this time with us. Recall what I said earlier in this video. Those that are joining Facebook groups understand both sides of the issue. There, there are those that are just waking up, that are just beginning to unindoctrinate, show them some kindness, and there are those of us that have been unindoctrinating for a very long time, understand where we are also. Yeah, and with the world situation right now, everybody is under a tremendous amount of anxiety and stress. And so just be kind to one another. Be kind to one another because fighting and arguing and anxiety and panic, um, it actually breaks down your immune system. And we were just listening to a video that we should put the link down below. And he was talking about... You know, that's the only defense we have at this point, is staying away from those infected and building up our own immune system. Yes. So, thank you for watching, and we know we really appreciate everything, and you guys sending us all this information and research, we appreciate it, and we love you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.